This is an introduction into using dynamic data inside of Quickly. Here I am inside of the editor inside of Quickly, and you can see that I have this weird looking thing here where if I click on it over here under dynamic inserter, it says return function and then it has a function name. And same down here under dynamic inserter, we're running a function. On the front end though, it looks like this on my home page where we have the title of the page and then we have this byline. Now, if I go to my tools page, we have the title, but we don't have a byline. If I go to my blog page and then click into a blog post, we have the title, but then we output the date. So all of that inside of Quickly is actually this one template part here. And I'm changing the data across the different pages and, the and across the different templates by using this dynamic inserter feature. And that's what we're going to look at using today. Now, as I said, this is in fact a template part. So if I go to the front end of my website and I edit my single template, under my header, you can see we have a post title template part and inside there is exactly what we were just look at, looking at in the previous section. So again, we are going to recreate from scratch this template part for the post title. And then down here, we are going to use the dynamic inserter feature to output text dynamically. So change it based on conditions throughout our website. Now, the second place that I'm using the dynamic inserter feature, if I go back to my website, is the following. If I go to my blog page, you can see that it's using the index template and we have a card layout, or I call it a box layout. So we have the post title, we have the date, and then we have a read more, which goes to the, uh, the actual single post. Now, if I go up to courses, here we have a similar layout. So inside of the box, we have our title of the course, how many lessons are in the course, and then a link to take the course. So if I put these side by side, where we have the course on the left and my blog post on the right, you can see that it's the same structure, but the actual content within the card is changing. So the title, yep, that's good, but lessons versus the date published and take course versus read more. So we have data that's changing, but if we have a look at the template being used in both cases here, for the courses, we're using the index template and over here for the blog posts, we're also using the index template. So they're using the same template, but we're using dynamic data to change what's output here based on the type of content being shown, whether it's a course page or whether it's my blog page. So let's go ahead and edit the index template. So I'll go edit template. And this is what that card looks like in the Quickly Editor. So I have the post title here. And then under that, if I click over to here, we're using the dynamic inserter, which outputs the returned value from a function called card meta one. And then over here, we have another dynamic inserter running and the function, whatever's returned from this function, the value gets output here. And if we have a quick glance at that function there, so for the first one, if it is a learn dash course, we're going to return the amount of lessons there. Otherwise we'll output the post date. So again, the course page, we return lessons and the blog page, we return the post date. On the right hand side, if it's our learn dash courses page, we say take course, Otherwise we return read more, take course, read more. So now that you know how dynamic data works and how I'm using it on my website, before I show you how to set this up, you might be wondering what is the benefit of using dynamic data? If we go through this specific example that I just gave you and why that helps me manage my website, it's that by using dynamic data, I can manage my website using fewer templates inside of Quickly. So the alternative to what I just showed you would be to design my blog page. And when that's all nice and working, I would then have to clone that exact design to my course page, then change those small little details in the bottom of the card. And then any changes in the future that I wanna to make to that design, I would have to edit in both my blog template and then my course template. So I'm managing two different templates to try and make them look exactly the same because small details change between them. Doesn't really make sense. It's a lot harder for me as somebody managing a website to do that. And so that's why dynamic data helps me in this particular case. I manage one template and the design in that one template, and then we change the data out based on conditions using the dynamic inserter feature inside of Quickly. So hopefully you can see the benefit of using dynamic data in your templates. Let's get into recreating this so you can see how to go and do this in your own website. So here we are on a staging website, meaning I took my live website and I cloned it. And then what I've done here in the staging website is that I've removed all the dynamic data. So you can see the page title at the top here, there's no text being output. And if I go to my blog page, there's no text being output at the bottom of our boxes. 
And then if I go to my courses page, you can see we've lost the text at the bottom of this card. So let's go ahead and recreate this all from scratch, starting with the post title area. So to start, let's go to our blog page and then into a blog post. And we can see from up the top here, this is using our single template. So here I will go edit template. And inside here, you can see that I've created a template part called post title, and that contains a section with a box, which is just giving the, the blue border the rounded corners. And then we have a heading block and a paragraph block. So on the heading, I can just say my heading, and then here I'll just say my text. And if we save and save, and on the front end, we can see it says my heading and my text. But we obviously wanna output the name of the blog post, the title, and the date. So back in here, let's go ahead and set that up. So normally you'd click onto here and then you'd go up to dynamic content and we would select WordPress, the post title, and then down here we would do the same dynamic content, WordPress, post date, date modified, and the format, and then save and save. Back here we'd reload. Now for this particular blog post, this looks good. It's the title of the blog post and the date that it was published. But now if we navigate away from a blog post and we go to a page, so our tools page, we have the title of the page, but we have the date. We probably don't really want that there. So let's go ahead and add conditions. So this only outputs if it's a single blog post. So back here in our paragraph, I will click on conditions. And then here we will enable this and we'll say if the post type equals a post like that. Now, if we save and save back here, if we reload our page, now this only outputs the title of the page, which is what we want. Back on our blog post, this is outputting the date. So this is working. So we have our single post working and our page is working. Now let's go to our front page, i.e. our home page. And this says home page because I've obviously spelled this wrong in the back end, but we obviously don't want this to output. I want the title of my home page to say this, and then I want the byline text to say this. So this is where we're going to set up our first instance of our dynamic data using the dynamic inserter feature. So back here, if we click on our heading block, before, remember I showed you the dynamic inserter is a plus icon, but we don't see it here. And this took me a little bit of investigating to see why that was, so hopefully this saves you time. You won't see the dynamic inserter icon if you have dynamic content enabled here. So if we unset that and unset that, then we click back on the heading. Now we see it over here, dynamic inserter. So let's click here and then under here, we wanna search for return function and then select it. And we wanna remove everything that isn't the return like that. Now in the function box, this is whatever you wanna call your function, whatever makes sense to you. But in my case, I'm gonna call this C post title, so custom post title. And you need to put the brackets here. Now you can pass arguments inside of here. We're not gonna do this in this example. We're gonna leave it exactly like this. So now with this done, let's save and save. And back on our homepage, if I reload, you can see it's gone. So now we need to go and write our function to return a value based on conditions. So jump to wherever you like to add your custom code. So whether it's your functions.php file in your child theme, if you're using a code snippets plugin in there, for me, I add it in my own custom plugin. So in this file here, we're going to do function, then the name of the function that we added inside the dynamic inserter field. And then inside of here, this is where we start doing our logic. So if I return the word hello here and save, if we go to the front end and reload here, now it's saying hello. So here we could do if is front page text equals, and then get this, paste it in there. And then at the end, we can return text. So if it's the front page of our website, we wanna output this and then return that at the end of the function. So back here, if I reload, now that's working. So now let's go to a page and here we wanna output the title. Now in this particular website, the only place that I want to change the text is the front page. Otherwise, I wanna output the title of that post or page or custom post type. So if it's the front page, we customize it, else text equals get the title, and then we return the title. So if I save that and reload, there's the title of our page. Our home page is intact. We go to articles. Okay, here we need to change some stuff, and we're gonna get into that in a second, because this is our blog page, but it's returning the first title of the first blog post there, the about page, that looks good. If I go into an actual blog uh, post, so if I go into the individual post, this is working. So here we just need to make sure that on the blog page, we show something different. And then also if I go to my dashboard and then I go to posts and I go to software, this is a custom taxonomy for my blog post. And if I open up uh, something in here, so if I go funnel kit, 
I would want to change this to the title of the post type archive. Now I am going to copy and paste the code from my live website into here, but I think you get the idea of how you can use this in your own website. So what I'm about to show you, it really isn't going to make much difference if I code it from scratch versus just pasting it. So I'll just get this function and paste it with the code from my live website. So this is still the same function name. And then we're just checking if it's a front page, set the text to this. If it's my blog page, then change it to articles. If it's an archive page, get the archive title. Otherwise, just output the title of the blog post or the page and then return it. So if we save this, here if we reload the custom taxonomy page, the software funnel kit, if I go to my blog page, it says articles. It's outputting the date here, so we'll come back to that in a second. If we go to the home page, this is all working. So the last thing that I have in this particular case in my own website is just to remove this text before the taxonomy term. And that's just using this here. So it's a filter, get the archive filter if it's a category and it just goes through and basically just removes that first part of the term. So if we save that, come back here and reload, now it just says the term name. If I go into a single blog post, we have that there and the date. So now the only thing that we really need to do with this post title area is handle outputting that byline text. So on the home page, we need to change it to say a specific thing. And then if we go to my blog page, we don't want to output that there. And if we go into a single post, the date is outputting there as we want it. So let's go ahead and finalize that. So to do that, we'll go back into our template and then on our paragraph, we need to use the dynamic inserter. So here we need to unselect this so we can access that. And now if we click back on it, we can click this icon and then here return function. And we just want to get rid of everything that doesn't say the name of the function. And then here I'm going to call mine post title by text and do my brackets. Let's save and save. And then I'll get this. And then back in our editor, we just need to do that function. So we'll write a little bit of this and then I'll paste the code from my live website. If it's the front page, then we want to say without hiring a developer. So I'll put that in there and then we will return text. So if I save this, come back and reload, nothing's outputting and it is because we set a condition before. So let's remove that condition for now. Let's disable it. Just save, save. Then back here, if we reload, now that's outputting there. So that's the home page done. Now, if we go to our tools page, uh, we can see that it's outputting our heading here, but there's extra space here. So if we have a look at what's going on here, we can see that it's creating the paragraph block, but inside of the paragraph, there's no data being output because we're not returning any data to be output there. So we want to only show this paragraph block if we're returning data to be put in its place or inside of it. So back here, the way that we can do that is just copy our function name and then back on our paragraph under conditions, we can enable our conditions and we can add a condition and here return function, then the name of our function. Then here we can say uh, does not equal and then nothing. So as long as we're returning something, show this element on the page. Otherwise, if it equals nothing, then just don't show it. So with that done, I'll save and save. And then back here, if we reload, this paragraph should hide. So as we can see, it's just hidden. If we inspect, now it's not outputting on the page because we're not returning any data for it. If we go back to our home page, we still have it showing there. So the next thing that we want to do is go to our blog page and then into a blog post and output the date here. So I am just going to replace this with the live function because I think you get the point of how this works. So here, if it's the front page, text equals our byline. Else, if it's a post or one of my custom post types, we'll output the date modified. Otherwise, text is blank, return text. And when text is blank, then it's not going to output our paragraph element. So if I save that, come back to our blog post, we now have the date showing there. The blog page, nothing's output there. If we go to our tools, which is a page, we don't have anything. And our home page, we have that showing. And if I open up our custom taxonomy again, you can see we only have the term there. So that's set up exactly how we want the post title area. So that's the end of that section. I hope that was you know, insightful of how you could go and do this in your own website. Let's now go on to doing the cards. So to recap for our blog page and other custom post types, their archive page, we wanna show the date or the date modified that the, the post was published and then also a read more text here. And then if we go to the courses page, which is a learn dash courses page, I wanna output the number of lessons in its place there and say take course instead of read more. So let's go ahead and start with the blog page. If we go to our blog page, it is currently empty. So this is the index template. So let's go ahead and edit that. So I'll go up to here and go edit template. 
And if you're wondering why we're editing our index template to affect our blog page, I would definitely recommend going and watching this uh, video here, set up quickly templates using full site editor. I go through the WordPress template hierarchy and how to set up all your different templates inside of quickly. So here I am editing my index template. And I know that on the front end, it is in two columns. Here we're in one because I have zoomed in, but it doesn't really change what we're about to do. So here, if I click down into my post meta, we have a paragraph block that is called date and it's just text. So if I was to save this, then save and go back to the front end and reload, it just says date and it says more text. These are currently static values. Let's go and update that. So clicking on my paragraph block here that says date, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that text. And then let's click the dynamic inserter, search for return function. And then in here, we put the name of our function. And in my case, I'm gonna call it C card meta and one. And while we're here, let's do the right-hand side as well. So I will go ahead and delete the text there and go insert and here return function. And then I'll click and then here put the name of our second function, C card meta two, and then save and save. And here in the back end editor, that should all be done. So we're gonna focus from here on, on the front end and how those things change. So I'll close this down. And then on the front end, I'll reload. And because we haven't set up our functions to return anything, these are empty. So let's go ahead and create our functions. Now for these ones, I'm gonna paste the functions from my live website. So here's our function name that we added into quickly. And then here we're saying, if it's our archive for courses, so if it's our courses page for Learn Dash, then return Learn Dash, so the number of steps in the Learn Dash course, and then after that, add a space and then the word lessons. Otherwise, we just wanna return the post modified date. So here on my courses page, it says six, so space and then the word lessons. And if I go to my blog page, it says the date. If you wanted to, you could do something like last updated, and save, back here, reload, last updated here, if you wanted to do that. But the main thing is here, we're changing the data across the two different pages based on these conditions. I'll just undo that. Now let's do the right hand side of the card. So there it is, with the function name, meta two. If it's our courses page, say take course, otherwise return read more. Save, back here if I reload the blog page, read more, and then courses if I reload, and courses take course. With dynamic data working in your website, I would recommend watching this video here that's gonna show you how to set up all your templates inside of Quickly using the full site editor. So I'll see you in this video.